50 millimeter lens is by far my most used lens. If you are looking to buy a prime lens and you don't know what to buy first, this is absolutely the one you should buy. Now, most manufacturers make some kind of prime lens, especially in that 50 millimeter range. I know some of them might be 55 or 52. I don't actually know too much about it because I have shot Canon my entire life, but a 50 millimeter lens can be used for almost everything. Here's what you can shoot with a 50 millimeter lens. Number one, you can shoot portraits. The 50 millimeter lens is great for portraits of individual people as well as couples, which is mostly what I'm shooting on a wedding day. You can get in close, you can back up, you can get full length, you can get three quarter, you can even get just beautiful face shots with a 50 millimeter lens. You can also shoot groups. When I'm shooting family photos or at the church or in a park, I like to use a 50 millimeter lens to add a little bit of compression. I can get a ton of people in the photo in a somewhat tight space but it makes them look more together when you're using a 50 millimeter lens versus a 35 or a 24. A 50 is also great for shooting details. Shoot details of a tablescape, shoot details of invitation, shoes, even jewelry and some kind of lay flat. The 50 is my go-to for all of my morning prep pictures, all my detail pictures in the morning as well as all of my reception pictures at night. The 50 is great for landscapes too. Don't just think that because you're shooting a large area that you have to use a wide lens. You really don't. I shoot nighttime photos and roomscapes with a 50 millimeter. When you're using a prime lens, which means that it's a fixed focal length, in other words, you can't zoom in or out. It seems like something that's tedious, but you can always zoom with your feet, right? Go closer and further away. It seems like more work, but trust me, you're going to get a much more crisp image out of a prime lens, typically versus a zoom lens. Another great thing about a prime lens is that it has a really low aperture in most cases. This gives you a more shallow depth of field, giving you that nice, soft, dreamy background, beautiful bokeh, and it also lets you draw the viewer's attention to a certain point of focus. Now, this can make it a little bit more difficult to focus, but also with prime lenses is usually the ability to focus faster. If you purchase your brand's top-end prime lens, it's usually a very fast-focusing lens. The 50 mm at least in the Canon line, is probably one of the fastest focusing lens in the lineup. Which is another reason I like to use it, because I can focus very quickly during a family photo session, and it's not difficult to photograph at night. Overall, 50 millimeter lens is super versatile. You can use it pretty much for anything. If I had one lens to take with me on a wedding day and I couldn't have anything else, this would be it. This is our beautiful lens that we have here. Now, this baby I am grabbing out of my bag more often because it's lighter, but it's also super fast focusing. Focusing is sort of a marriage between the lens and the focusing capabilities of the camera. Now, these shots were taken with the Canon EOS R, which has beautiful head uh, and eye detection which you can see performing really nicely in these shots. We've got great follow focus, great sharp, crisp photos. I do have the EF 70 to 200 just for a little bit of comparison, but this is not really a which is better video uh, because they're really kind of different. This is a lighter lens and that is a big deal. This lens right here is 3.3 pounds as opposed to the RF version, which is only 2.35. Or if you want to do that in gray, uh, the RF lens is 1,070 grams versus the EF lens is 1,480 grams. So those are some big things. Now, they both have image stabilization in it, but the image stabilization in the RF lens is much more advanced. Let me just show you the buttons here, right? You've got all of your same buttons as far as image st stabilization goes. You know, it's on, off, or modes one or two, but the RF has a third mode. This has five stops of stabilization versus three and a half that the EF lens does. So more stabilization, and then of course you pair that with an R5 or an R6 that has in-body stabilization and mind blown. They are both 77 millimeter fronts, so you know some of your same filters and lens caps can fit from one to the other if you are upgrading. Okay, that's all the boring crap that you probably could have read off like a spec sheet on Adorama, but here's what actually matters shooting with it. What does that mean? Now the 70 to 200, I think it's a staple in any photographer's bag. However, 
I don't pick it up out of my bag half the time. Why? Because it's heavy, it's cumbersome, and I usually use my 135 2.0, which is a beautiful lens and goes all the way down to 2.0, and I don't have to worry as much about shake, being able to go a little bit lower on the aperture, plus the lens is super light. So this is great to have in my bag, and it's wonderful, and I use it, but not nearly as much as I found that I used this baby. So this is the 135, the Canon 135 2.0. It's a prime lens, which is amazing, but it's a nice telephoto lens, which gives you really pretty compression. So this lens is a secret lens. I always call it the secret lens because nobody really knows about it, or it's not one that you immediately think to put in your arsenal, like you think of the 50 millimeter 1.2 or even the 85 or 70 to 200. Those are like your typical lenses that people talk about and use all the time. But the 135, not as well known and this prime lens is under a thousand bucks which is pretty great for any prime lens why do I like it one it goes down to 2.0 and going down to 2.0 lets me take this lens and use it in really dark churches so I'm a wedding photographer and I shoot in dark churches all the time which is a nightmare especially when it's like a stained glass window coming in and a red carpet reflecting up my favorite thing in the world so this is a long lens a 135 but goes all the way down to 2.0 so it's gonna let in a lot more light and help me work with those really dark scenarios where I can't be right on top of the couple and it's small, it's light. Now, as much as I'd like to have a 200 millimeter 2.0, that lens is a beast and I need to use a monopod or you know, only use it every once in a while. So that's not quite as realistic for me. Plus it doesn't fit in my bag and then I'd have to take an extra bag on top of all my other bags that I carry with me on a wedding day and it's just, it's not for me. Anyway, I love the lens, it's gorgeous, but to me, this is a better choice. So 135, you're zoomed in pretty close, especially if you're shooting on a crop sensor and you can go all the way down to 2.0. This is also a really great lens for if you're doing something like faking golden hour. I'm sure you have seen videos or hopefully you've seen some videos about my favorite lighting trick and we'll definitely have some here on this channel, but this is a lens that I'm gonna use whether I have off camera flash doing it or some kind, you know, natural light or reflection or this is gonna help that light coming into the lens to haze a lot more than it would be on like a 50 millimeter. So if I want that, not a flare, but more of like a haze coming in to make it look like soft and dreamy, a little less contrasty, more warm, this is the lens that I'm gonna choose for that. It's also a great lens if you really want to blur your background as much as humanly possible. So you might be thinking, well, why wouldn't I use a 70 to 200 for that? And you could, but those are only going down typically to 2.8. With the 135, you're gaining all of that compression, so your background is getting compressed in with your subject, and going all the way down to 2.0 just makes your depth of field that much more shallow so that the background is that much more blurry. The combination of the two, it's magical. It's just, it's lovely. So I'm using this when I'm photographing my couples, obviously uh, photographing more close up or being able to just sneak in into a situation like uh, this picture, I know we'll pop up here. This is the 135 during the reception. It's a fast focusing lens, so I can shoot it and use it during a reception and I typically have this on during toast. I'm photographing everyone's reactions, their faces, trying to get as many people on camera as I can. And then of course, afterwards when, you know, the father of the bride in this case is hugging the bride after his toast, this is a great lens for just getting in on those intimate moments without being obtrusive. It's light, it's small, it fits everywhere. This lens is definitely one that I always have with me on any engagement session, definitely on my wedding, because I carry every lens I own pretty much on my weddings, but it comes with me really any shoot I have. If I were to shoot a wedding or a portrait shoot or anything with only a couple of lenses, it would be my 50 millimeter first, and then this one would be my second. So if you're looking to purchase prime lenses, I would say make the 50 millimeter your first choice because it's just so versatile, you can do anything with it. And then this one is gonna be your second purchase. And again, under a thousand bucks for a prime lens, it's great. Looking for some inspiration? Then make sure you download my free posing inspiration guide. It's full of ideas for individuals, couples, and groups. Grab it in the link below. Some things to note about this lens, one, it is freaking heavy. This, this is a beast of a lens. It is huge. This is 
not for someone who wants to have a light bag to carry around. However, because it's a 28 to 70 at 2.0, this potentially replaces a 20, 24, I mean, it's actually four millimeters, but a 24, 35 and 50 millimeter prime lens. Because of the range of this thing at 2.0, you're essentially getting three prime lenses in one. So if I were to stack together a 25, a 35, and a 50 millimeter prime lens, you know what? Compared to that, this is lighter. Now, granted, this is going down to 2.0 and not down to 1.2 or 1.4 like those other prime lenses, but for my style of shooting, I usually don't go that low anyway. I tend to hover somewhere around 2.5 to 3.2. Now this lens is only for mirrorless cameras, so you cannot adapt this to fit onto your DSLR. The shots that you will see that I have used with this lens are from the Canon EOS R and the Canon EOS R6. So right off the bat, this was a shoot that I did for Adorama's Instagram, and I knew I was gonna photograph my daughter, so we got some great portrait shots here. But in addition, I knew she was gonna be moving around a lot because she's five, that's what they do. All right, so we have jumping on the bed that I had to go all the way up again to 6400 ISO. I wanted to do this natural light because it was, the whole shoot was all about you know doing it at home and concentrating on things at home and I didn't want to close off what I was trying to share with people by needing to use flash. I was trying to make it accessible to anyone even if you don't have a flash. So I had to go high on my shutter speed, 500th of a second again, all the way down at 2.0 on my aperture. So just some of the shots that we got from there. I mean, it's a super crisp, gorgeous lens. I mean, if I zoom in on this one, bam, right there. And this is at ISO 2000, so it's a testament to the R how clear this is as well. Let me see right here, there you go. Nice shot. Got her eyes right in there. Super crisp, and that's at 1600 also. All right, moving on, looking at a little bit more low light. This was shot at 8,000, so definitely a little bit more, and this is all JPEG and JPEG processed, very little bit because this was shot on the R6. Pictures before were all shot on the R, but this is the R6, so um, I couldn't process any raw files, so we're stuck with JPEGs, but I think that's good for you to just see exactly how it comes out and how I was using it. So for this, we were photographing a gamer, very dark room, nothing but blue and red lights, so really not ideal. Again, can't use flash, so I'm all the way down at 2.0, and this lens, you know, I was getting behind the scenes of the film shoot, all right, and you know, it's, it was a great lens. It has a specific purpose, but it easily gets you out of jams, amazingly. This is another shoot, it was behind the scenes. We were in a, a club, uh, AKA my studio, and we had uh, fog going and lights, and again, no real white lights, so just difficult in general. And this lens performed wonderfully when it came to fast focusing and making sure that it stuck with, I always have AI servo on with my mirrorless camera. So it's eye tracking and moving along with my subject. And it did a beautiful job. I'm getting in some of these details here. This is one of my favorite shots, love that one. And just being able to get, again, wide if I need to, all the way wide, like something like this, uh, or be able to zoom in a little bit closer to these shots here. And again, these are, ISO 1600 right now. And I was trying to, again, keep a high shutter speed because he's bopping and moving, he's DJing and moving around. I gotta be able to freeze that action to an extent. So pretty good stuff. Yeah, the only white light came from his computer. <laughs> All right, so really, really useful lens. Now, a second time, actually, I used this lens, I was doing headshots. So these are good examples of using this lens for headshots. So I was able to use it right in the hotel room, natural light reflector on the opposite side of the window. The window is on the right side and get some really gorgeous headshots. And then of course, a group photo of them too. Now here, this is the engagement session that I shot from the proposal. He proposed to her the night before and then surprised her with an engagement session the next day. So amazing. So these were shot outdoors, finally a little bit more ideal circumstances, but again, I was able to carry this lens instead of carrying around three different lenses. So what I actually did, I carried around my R with this 28 to 70, and then 
I had uh, my 135 that actually just kept on my DSLR, my Canon 1DX Mark II at the time, uh, just because uh, I think I had the adapter, but I wanted to be able to just switch back and forth without having to switch lenses at all. And it worked really great. So being able to get nice close-ups here and just uh, look at the right in the background. Let's just zoom into that for a second. Super crisp right on her eyes and gorgeous bouquet behind. And that's the kind of thing you expect to see, obviously, at 2.0 but really cute, able to capture that motion as they're kind of walking along the street, coming up the subway. I just, I, I really loved this lens. And you can see that I kind of varied it a lot. This is shot at 70, that's at 51. This was at 47, that was 70, 56. It gives me a lot of freedom when normally I am shooting with all prime lenses. And if I want to zoom, do it with my feet. <laughs> it's kind of nice to have the freedom to go nice and low on an aperture and then be able to do all the zooming and get the variety of essentially three different prime lenses that I would typically use all in one. So long story short, this little darling, or rather this really big darling, oh my gosh, that is this, it is like, this is how I do my shoulder exercises. This is crazy. Um, so not for the faint of heart, but you know what? Do you even lift, bro? <laughs> but it, it's a great lens, it really is. It's definitely one that I am happy to have. Lens is great for a casual photographer, like moms or streamers, street photographers, any amateur photographer, or just someone looking for a nice prime lens that's fast and low light and doesn't break the bank. The fast autofocus and half life-size macro function make this a really useful lens for someone who's not looking to spend a ton of money. Going all the way down to 2.0 lets you use this in low light, but it's also going to give you a beautiful bouquet in the image. The maximum magnification is 0.5 times and the minimum focusing distance is 1.15 feet. Also an added bonus to this is the image stabilization. If you know me, I love any lens that has image stabilization. So this little baby has up to five stops of shake stabilization. What that means if you're not familiar with it is the rule of thumb for an 85 millimeter focal length is to shoot at a shutter speed of say a hundredth of a second or higher. With five stops of stabilization, you can stop down five times from that one one hundredth of a second and still be okay. Granted, probably don't be running around when you shoot with it. Hold still, hold your breath, and stop your heart from beating, and you'll be great. Like a lot of the RF lenses, you have a control ring that you can custom set, and the aperture has nine blades in it. So again, it just creates that beautifully soft bouquet. So I have a lot of images that I shot with the 85 2.0 in lots of different scenarios. These are all straight out of camera images with auto white balance. I just figured for the person who's going to buy this lens, not quite super professional, uh, you know, maybe professional, but they'd probably be using auto white balance and not really editing their pictures a whole ton. So I just wanted to show you exactly what's coming out of here. So let's go ahead and dive in. These first photos here, these are all shot at a fairly low ISO, 200 and lower, and down at 2.8 or 2.0. And it gives you a good feel for the kind of range that it has, whether you're, you know, you're focusing nice and close like this one here, or you're focusing a little bit further away like these. Uh, we did have a daylight light here, so you kind of see the coloring of that. So pretty easy to use indoors, but then we pop into outdoors and obviously outdoors is just gorgeous and easy to use. We've got a lot of images here. And of course I'm gonna zoom in on a lot of these for you. This was shot at 2.0, just super, super crisp, no problems there. And pretty fast focusing, obviously outdoors is a lot easier for fast focusing, uh, but as we kind of go through these, you'll be able to see. Uh, but this is a good example for just looking at you know, the smoothness of the bouquet behind or the background blur and just taking a look at that. So that's a good image, maybe looking at it more like right here. There you go, so you can really see that. Uh, overall, a very easy lens to use. It's lightweight, it's easy to photograph with, it creates really nice crisp images and of course gives you the freedom to go all the way down to 2.0. It's a great portrait lens for somebody who needs a faster portrait lens, which a lot of times, uh, you know, are people that are photographing outside, but also I wanted you to see when we shoot at 6400. Now the focusing is not as fast shooting at 6400 because it's a lot darker and, you know, and I have all these different color lights and things like that, but I was pretty impressed. 
pretty impressed with what I saw as far as quality and you know how quickly it focused. I definitely expected it to hiccup a little bit more than it did, so that made me happy. All right, so we've got a couple more here, just outside. I love this shot right here. Totally just caught that little starburst. <laughs> All right, let me get to indoors because indoors, again, I wanna make this applicable to who would be actually considering purchasing this lens and I think a lot of moms would be. This lens reminds me a lot of that 50 millimeter 1.4 or 1.8, which are lenses I would always recommend to moms just wanting to take great pictures, nice portraits of their kids, but not wanting to spend a ton of money. So we've got some shots of my kids here inside, shot around 500 ISO and keeping the aperture nice and low. And I was able to pinpoint focus exactly where I wanted it, uh, you know, even fine tuning right to her bracelet and <laughs> this little one. And again, just auto white balance. I want to say, no, I was in manual for these. I didn't go into, I probably should have gone into aperture, shutter priority or program just to see how it would perform with the camera settings that a lot of people who would use this lens would use. But overall, pretty good, nice and crisp. You can even see the hair. <laughs> on her eye. Uh, this is a selfie, so I figured I'd turn the camera around on myself, which is really easy to do with uh, with the R6. You know, just kind of flip it around and you can see exactly what you're doing and get a photo of yourself and your super crisp eyelashes uh, and wrinkles and makeup clumping and all the rest of that. So enjoy that one, you're welcome. <laughs> I had to do my own makeup that day. All right, but just a couple more. And you know, my son, he's two. In these pictures and it was fast focusing enough along with the r6 and you know the ai servo and eye detection it was all fast focusing enough to keep up with him so i felt like that was a good example i mean i can even see his eye boogers and his real boogers so that's good all right so just all different scenarios <laughs> even even running just able to keep up with that and focus right on his crazy little face so I hope that's helpful. I wanted to get a lot of different scenarios where you could see how this lens performed in all of them. Uh, like I said, I think this is a great lens. I think it's a perfect lens for, you know, even professional photographers are going to, are going to really like this lens, definitely shooting it outside and such. So thanks so much. Like, comment, subscribe, and share, and come back.